Welcome to uh, the second webinar in this series uh, aimed at providing some simple guidance on reintroducing rugby union back into some educational settings. Uh, aim of these sessions again is just to give some pretty simple advice, some guidance on simple session plans that you can use within your school and think about some tips about how to enthuse your players with that whilst doing that. Uh, really delighted to be joined by Russell Earnshaw this week uh, from Match Academy and also our former England Sevens and England Academy coach. Welcome along, Russell. Hey, mate. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Um, again, on this, we're going to outline a simple session plan you can use, um, with the main focus being around coaching within that and trying to support the individual within each session. Um, so really delighted to have Rusty on the call. I'd say he's the master in terms of the individual challenges and support within in sessions. So we'll be trying to pick his brain across most of the sessions. Uh, we'll get straight into the kind of session detail. Um, so again, the outcomes there is trying to help and further the player's ability of the principles of play. We're going to focus a little bit more along the lines of support this time and some of the options within support as well. And we're going to look at the decision making around the ones that have been tackled and, and what they can do to keep the ball going forward. Again, it's going to go some way to develop the catch and pass and support skills as we go on. So for the first game recommendations, again, the warm up, we'd recommend using our Activate programme. We mentioned on the last one about using the preparation set two. So the next preparation set is uh, we used last time as set one. The next one is set two. Again, if you go to the YouTube Keep Your Boots On channel and just look at the Activate playlist, you'll find that. And then as a warm up, Rusty inspired me with the use of a rondo session earlier this week. Um, so simple groups of six, four attackers versus two defenders. The four attackers got to try and make as many passes as they can before the defenders um, make a tackle with someone in possession of the ball. If the defence can do that, they turn into attackers and choose two new defenders. Um, we hope this will again link into some of the decision making skills they'll use within the, the main game. Again, as the game zone, as last week and as with most stuff in terms of our return to rugby roadmap, we recommend using the ready for rugby format, which is our new two touch format. And again, uh, really pleased with how that's been received within the club and the school game. Rusty, I don't know how you found using that ready for rugby format. Yeah, good question. And I've coached twice this week and it would fuel all my biases. I think we're trying to make skillful players and any game that involves you know, evasion and trying to find space and not running directly into people is is helpful. Um, so I've really enjoyed it. Um, I've I played tennis side last night and I, I like the fact, you know, it's up to 10. So I could play six a side. Actually, it was interesting. So I did some coach development last night. Once it gets to 10 a side, then, then there might be some people on edges that you might consider moving in or you might say, actually, we'll play six aside here and we'll have a, a skill zone over here or, or however you want to work it. But just be mindful of the numbers would be my recommendation. I actually think it's a great game because once you go above 10, then people start not touching the ball mm -hmm. and they start thinking it's proper rugby and doing all the stuff we possibly don't want them to do. Good stuff. What, what kind of skills you see developed in the players when you when they play in that game? Yeah, we played... Um, we played last night at Worthing and just the support stuff really was strong um, because there's no, you know, I think we probably all spent years and years of through the legs touch and doesn't really coach support. Uh, if you were born in Fiji, you'd be playing one touch turnover. So we're working our way towards that. Yeah, just real good support play. Um, we actually played a game. We played the ready for rugby game, but both teams chose a three point way of scoring. And one team picked cross kicks and didn't tell the other team. And one team picked score out wide and didn't tell the other team. So we got some kicking stuff, which was which was cool. And then we also got lots of kind of ball movement, trying to get it to edges. So yeah. what we found was actually the people we were probably concerned with on the edge, they actually got some touches. Oh, great stuff. Um, in this session, what we've tried to look at as well is promoting... Um, players' decision-making ones that have been tackled and obviously using the touches as a tackle to simulate that and they're ready for rugby. So the, the progression for this week is that on that second touch uh, in the attack zone, a ball carrier must go to floor and then they can choose then to either pop the ball to any support players in a position to receive it or if there's no support players in position, they can present the ball and as you'd see in a normal game, a scrub half or, or another support player would come and, and move the ball away from that tackle area. 
Um, and in order to create a bit of that space to allow players to make some good decisions, we're asking for the defender who made that second touch to go to floor also. Um, so that's our kind of game zone format for this session. Um, in terms of how we mentioned last time at the RFU, we'd like to adopt that game zone skill zone approach. So whilst the game's taking place, we can pull two or three, four, five players out into a small little skill zone and develop some of the actions they're, they're seeing within the game to help support their individual development. Um, we had one planned ready to go and Rusty came up with some pretty good progressions on that. So Rusty, I don't know if you want to talk through that skill zone we explained a second ago. Yeah, look, and, and just to go back to the main game. Um, so the future of the game is definitely lifting the ball off the floor. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, that would be your preferred type of continuity, really. The scrum half would often, or whoever's there, would want the ball lifted to them because it'll be quicker and the defence will be less set. So I think it's a good progression that, you know, we've probably had a few years of presenting the ball on the floor. Actually, we should possibly be looking for the lift and you start to see the way the game's going and the way people want to avoid taking the ball in contacty situations because of the new kind of ref interpretations, then I think it's a good addition. So, yeah, and, and it's, uh, I mean, I guess it depends what, what ages you're coaching with and you can adapt this however you want, really. Uh, actually, the falling part of it is, can be made to be, I guess, quite a fun skill. Uh, yeah. it's something that's that's worth playing around with and how do people fall and maybe you get them to to do a forward roll or something so we just designed something simple here and clearly you can play around with numbers in this situation it's three attackers one defender and they're almost playing a game where they're passing off the floor so their passes have to be off the floor and the defender's trying to tag them so if the defender tags them then someone else whoever they touch will switch on to being a defender but all passes are basically off the floor so you can run around and then you make a decision when do i go to the floor and then there's some skill around lifting the ball and the i guess the anticipation of the the nearest support player to get that because also don't forget that nearest support player might get touched if he's not careful yeah. so and i guess you could play around with numbers and i think the goal is really see who can get the longest streak and maybe that's the language with the kids to start to you know they they've all got streaks on their phone if they're anything like my kids yeah so you can get the biggest streak maybe a cool thing would be also that if they could get a streak of 10 then the coaches do 10 press-ups is always a great way to, to break <laughs> down the hierarchy and probably you know to show the kids how strong you used to be as well i think i've just seen 10 coaches switch off this webinar straight away as a result of that now um what are some of the key things you'd look to help the players with within that skill zone what's some of the key learning points you think they'll take away from that back into the game zone yeah great question i think it's about uh being really aware of where the person you're passing to is yeah i think it's probably a, a bit of communication of now's the time to go to ground we've got an opportunity the defender isn't here um i think we would develop some of the falling skills uh Clearly, as a defender, you're, you're starting to work on how can I dictate? Because this is quite hard for you. There's three attackers and one of you. So how can I kind of put you into a corner or, or, or force things my way? So, yeah, I think lots of those type of things will come up. And, yeah, it's all of that. Great stuff. Um, and then as with the session we talked about last week, we're... we're quite clear in terms of our the session plans there we'll make it as a pdf you can download it and look at some of the game variations and when you're looking at ready for rugby there's a, there's a whole format and resources you can use to understand the variations of the game how to set your pitch up how to manage your, your, your guidance and everything um some of the key things are we'll talk about the play development side of things in a second on this slide but how we kind of overcome some of the logistic side of things in terms of the protocols you face now yeah, great question. And I coached uh, the first time on Tuesday and I've coached Wednesday and I've coached Thursday and it's definitely different. So, um, yeah, I've probably just been really mindful of space and and actually what where do we put the sanitising bit? So it's not, you know, it, it, it kind of works seamlessly. How yeah. do we divide people up? When we did some, we did some rondos the other night, just making sure people are well apart uh, yeah. and not, uh, I actually don't particularly like calling that many huddles anyway. So, and I know they've still got a socially distance, but I didn't really want people stood around listening to Rusty for ages and ages. Yeah, uh, it, it helped on Wednesday. I actually, coached hockey on Wednesday that it was raining. I think it's a good uh, 
a good thing to think about as a coach. Imagine it is raining. Yeah. It, it often is in England, so you're fine. <laughs> Yeah. I tend to try and keep them active. And then when we'd have the 15 minute break, then that would probably be the time when we might do some discussion stuff. Great stuff. Yeah. And if again, for teachers who, who are looking at that and a bit worried about some of those logistics side of things, we'll try to give as, as many kind of points and guidance. Again, we'll reference our kind of kit bag. If you go to the England Rugby Education page, you'll find a kit bag there and that'll have all the links you'll need to kind of understand what the protocols are, how the group sizings, how often you need to sanitise and, and the kind of bubbles you might need to work with. So please do have a look at that. So if we're coming back to this session, Rustin, and this is something we're really keen to pick your brains about, is that kind of in, you know, coaching the individual within those sessions. Um, the kind of game will look after itself. Players are really good at managing themselves across many sports. But again, we're looking at this, you know, the the enthused section for people who are maybe not as competent with the rugby as, the, as, as maybe others in the session are, that middle group who often are, are fairly competent and sometimes can get overlooked in terms of their, they're quite competent and have got a good ability, but might need some support in terms of their technical development. And then those who are finding the game quite easier, they might be a bit more physically or emotionally more mature than others. And, and how do we stretch them? So you kind of gave us a couple of points in each. Maybe if you just talk us through that enthused one, how would you enthuse that that the kind of ones who need a bit more support to engage them into the game. Yeah, cool. And <clears throat> this is a real work on for me. So this will be the group I probably need to work the hardest on. And if I was with another coach, I might say, look, Cliffs, could could you just do the, the enthused bit for me? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> definitely through choice. So could be simple stuff. So last night <clears throat> I asked the players, how wide do you want the pitch to be? Yeah. So they can, they can choose some stuff. Uh, you know, how, how do you want to restart the game? Um, who, who do you want to be the, you know, just who do you want to be the first defender type stuff? So just giving people choice. It's a real powerful motivator. Replays to support people. So last night we had a couple of people who uh, we were doing a, a bit of a kicking, uh, some kicking stuff as well. And look, would you, do you want another go at that? Yeah. Um, and the other thing actually we did, and I know it's mentioned in the sport one is, and we allowed people who were about to kick or felt like time and they they were stressed by time and space to just call freeze and they could freeze the defenders and then do their kick yeah we just you know and just got them and got them into it a little bit yeah challenges but once again probably giving choice you know what 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 type of thing would you love to do tonight um had some you know players you know, you know and, and they just find what's meaningful to them so Couple of couple of kids have said to me, "Oh, Rusty, I'd just love to do a left hand pass." Yeah. And so one left hand pass is like, and then just probably noticing when they do do it. So the other thing I need to get better at is, ah, oh, just giving them a thumbs up when they did it, or a bit of a wink, or a yeah, yeah awesome work. I love that. Just and then information on there as well. I mean, just going back to that point about choice, you could be quite targeted to that, couldn't you? You could have like a you probably know the group of players who need some enthusiasm to engage them in the game uh, and you can have that kind of conscious thought going into that session these are the players i'm going to try and offer choice to now or you know if i see them attempt to do something I'll put themselves in a position where they where they attempt to do something and the outcome is not what they expected is giving them the chance to have a go at that again yeah yeah and, and a good way to, i mean to be honest with the with the naughty kids i'm probably giving a lot of choice to them as well i want them <laughs> yeah. my side Peer-to-peer -peer because it's really powerful. We yeah. would know that teenage brain. So actually, you know, someone, you know, give me some of the lives has done really well or who wants to give a shout out to someone else or when we're sanitizing, just go and grab someone and tell them something they've done really well. Yeah. And I'm really mindful there again. So if I think that someone will benefit from it, then I'll go, look, you know, give me some cool stuff you've seen lives do. Um, if, if, if I see that someone hasn't had it, then I'm, I would do that as well. So uh, it's really powerful. Belonging, connection, yeah. value by the group, you know, especially when it's your first session or you've just oh, started yeah. out at rugby, then, you know, then, then you're going to want to come back when the other kids said really nice stuff about you to your face. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's quite interesting that because you think... Every, we're recommending every 15 minutes that the equipment's cleaned and there's a chance to sanitise. So it's making the most out of that forced break, isn't it? You know, go and tell someone something you've, you've noticed them doing that's really good or go and identify, you know, someone you think would be able to support you in this next part of the game or what have you. So, yeah, although it's a 
kind of a recommendation that you should be doing. Let's make the most of that that will support the session. Just just, just on that, often we think as coaches there's one of us. But actually, yeah. if, you know, if you're a coach working on your own and you can get players talking to each other and supporting each other, then 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 it just becomes easier. Trust me. Yeah. So we could, you know, if you've got a group of, let's say, 15 players, then suddenly there's 16 of you helping each other out. Yeah. Um, and you might need to scaffold that. So you might need to model a conversation. So I've been to places where I've seen teenage boys stood in silence because they don't know how to say positive things to each other because they're not that used to it. Yeah. And actually it's to go, look, well, look, me and Livs will model that conversation. So Livs, I, I really appreciate the way you've, you've organised this webinar really well and you worked really hard to send the email through to me. Uh, and you might go, oh, Rusty, really appreciate the fact that, you know, you've, you've almost got out of bed to do the webinar. <laughs> nearly. So, uh, nearly. Yeah. No, yeah, good. And uh, looking, I want to come back to the support ones because I often think sometimes that kind of middle group who are fine, you know, competent with the game kind of get overlooked when you talked about your bias. That, that would be mine. I'd, my bias would be to support the ones that need engaging, the kind of underdog. Um, so and I would have to focus on that middle group. That's what if I was if I was coaching. So let's come back to those and spend a bit of time on. But if we're looking at those players who are possibly finding the game quite easy, this, they're quite dominant within the game as well. How do we kind of stretch those and how do we get them to support maybe some of that middle group or the enthused group? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great point. And this would be the bit that I probably feel like I'm stronger at. Um, individual challenges. Now, whether or not you tell everyone, whether yep. you tell the individual, that's your choice. So I might go, look, it lives, it would be great. You, you know, you you're one of the better players. Do you think you could get the three new kids to score a try today? Yeah. And if you achieve it, then I'll do 20 press-ups or <laughs> all the coaches will sing a song or whatever you want to do. Uh, yep. It might be actually, you know, Liv's, look, you're going to get one point for a try today, but three points for an assist, and that might encourage you to share the ball more. Um, yeah, I, always thinking of stuff like that. And once again, you, you, you could go the other way. So you might go, look, Liv's is... Lives is killing it. Lives is a one-touch player. So if anyone touches Lives once, it's a turnover. Yeah. And, but I would explain the rationale. Look, Lives is, Lives, you're doing really well. You're really skillful. You know, actually, are you keen for a stretch? Yeah. Say yes, and then. So I would, I would try and ask permission around individual challenges. Yeah. I would always look. Are you up for a challenge, or do you, do you fancy having a go at something? <clears throat> and then the second one is the non-dominant stuff. So we had it last night where. There's two really good kickers in the squad, both right foot dominant. And so, you know, have you ever kicked with your left foot? No. Um, well, look, in this game we're playing where it's one point for us kick, then it's three if you do it with your non-dominant. Yeah. And then, and then support them with that again. And same with the pass. So we might often see <clears throat> kind of more physically mature rugby players who can run over people or be, or be quick enough to go around them. And so they don't develop their passing skills necessarily, and they often won't be able to on their non-dominant side. So, yeah, once again, you know, rewarding that, perhaps also thinking about where you put them. So yeah. often quick guys go and stand on the wing and they don't develop their passing skills. If you stand on the right wing, you don't develop your left-hand pass unless you're going to pass it into touch. So just being really mindful, and I know I've put it in the support thing, <clears throat> Where are players going? So when they yeah. leave the huddle, where do they go? So we had it last night, a, a winger. Uh, I, I didn't know he was a winger. I said, oh, <clears throat> I was really curious. You were, you went and stood on the wing in the first game and then you moved to the middle. And he said, yeah, <clears throat> I wasn't touching the ball on the end. <laughs> uh, and, and I knew he wouldn't because there wasn't a single left-hander in the group of 20. So yeah. he was the right wing, so he didn't get the ball. <clears throat> and then he just moved himself in the middle. But once again, if that doesn't happen... As a coach, can we just nudge some people in a bit? Yeah. Just go, look, do you fancy going and exploring another? Or you might go to everyone, right? Everyone go, go and find a position on the pitch you haven't been in yet. Yeah. Go and play there and see what you find out. So I think that ties into the support group especially as well because, you know, just giving people those different experiences is a, is a great stretch as well. Yeah. Coming back to the, the point you made earlier on about the individual challenges and how you kind of reward that in terms of do you tell everyone. A lot of those kind of things you talked about in terms of can you go and find three players you might be able to support, 
they would kind of tie in quite well, not just within kind of rugby technical ability or tactical ability in terms of having their support, but you could probably link those through to your kind of school values. We have our core values as a, as a, as a governing body, but I'm guessing most schools have some values that they're trying to work across the whole curriculum. You know, so being able to tie them back into the reward schemes that the school has already got. You know, if I see you within this session, go and work with the three players who you feel need enthusing and support them to score a try or to support them to build their confidence. And I can notice that I can link you into what might be a merit scheme you've got or a house point scheme you've got within the school as well. We've right. seen teams yes. do that at really good points. Yeah, I was, and I was going to say, I mean, uh, all schools will have their values. It might yeah. be team, actually, who's going to be the best, the best team player today? Um, yeah, so, so it's a great suggestion. I, I actually don't think of rugby from a tech tech point of view. No, I'll be brutally honest. It's like, and and, and I guess that's as uh, when you start out as a coach, that's often the as we all did. You know, if I went back and watched myself coach my first session, I'd be probably dying inside. Yeah. Um, it would have been all tech tech X's nose, but actually, I think, and definitely with these games, once you sit get it going and you almost want to step out of the way of the players a little bit, yeah. let them find their way and nudge and support and probe and, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's, a, it's a great point in, in getting the values into it. Um, so coming back to the group that I need support on the most is definitely that support group that I'm mean, looking at, you touched on it a little bit there, really start to explore now how do you really engage you know, this group as well i think one just before you move, go into it rusty is one thing for me is about enabling this group to really to be aware of their progression as well sometimes it can go and notice that they've really made some really good non-dominant hand passes during that game and allowing them to be able to track and manage what progression they made in that session as well um you've mentioned their kind of freeze frames and, and replays um do you want to just talk us through those in a bit more detail <clears throat> yeah and actually i mean a real simple thing you could do is just get people to buddy up at the start of the session and go look what do you want to get out of today's session yeah. and they could be checking in with each other <clears throat> just because it came into my mind really from last night again we did the moving positions i did a lot of freezes really to go look what have you noticed where's the space would you like another go at that? So often around the replay. So those were the players that were starting to put themselves into positions where they were making some decisions and and and, and actually they just needed a little bit of support on. And rather than get everyone into a, into a socially distanced huddle, yeah. I'd rather go freeze. Just stay where you are, cool. Like, could could people just point to where the best space is to go forward at the moment? And yeah. actually we, we might go, okay, cool. How are we going to get it there? And do you want to replay that? Do you want to have another go at that? So we had a few players who were who were probably in the middle of the group and they put themselves in some positions and some stuff wasn't going so well for them. And I just wanted to support them, but I also wanted to grow their awareness of, OK, well, how do we get the ball there? Yeah. So did, did you know that this player outside you was, um, the player inside you was left-handed and actually this was a difficult pass for them? So just trying to raise their awareness of some stuff, really. but. Buddying, buddying players up for me is a, is a good one. You might go, actually, some of my better players, I'm going to get them to support some of the people that need the most support and yeah. going to be a good stretch for them. And doesn't everyone love it when one of the best players tells you you're doing great? Yeah. And then maybe around the middle as well, we start to buddy some people up or even put them in groups or even make them, you know, give them the option of competing against each other. So yeah. I'd be on the opposite team to you and it might be, you know, Rusty against Liv's. First one to get three interceptions wins the game and yeah. the other person will sing me a song type thing. <laughs> I think there's one thing that keeps, keeps coming up uh, time and time again, as you mentioned, any of these three and two support stretch. And that's that noticing, isn't it? Is your ability as a teacher, as a coach, to kind of notice things. And and that's something that we're trying to, we're trying to provide a format of the game that allows that to be quite self-sufficient. The players can get quite comfortable with the rulings and the variations and the progressions. You could even show them the video resources we've got, you know, prior to the session so they, they understand what the game looks like. But your ability, like you said before, then to, to step back and just notice some players doing stuff. And then let's say you're a teacher who's never played rugby before. You don't have to be noticing whether, you know, they've got a good technical pass or they're getting a good position. You can notice just good values within players as well and, and, and good efforts i suppose is, is the key one isn't it the effort they're making whether the outcome is good or not 
are they making an effort? Because again, we just want to enthuse or, or engage the whole class in, in into rugby union. Yeah, there's some. <clears throat> I mean, for me, I'm generally thinking <clears throat> if I'm scoring and refereeing a game, then I probably can't notice as well as I possibly yeah. could. So, <clears throat> and, and so let's say one of the school values is sportsmanship. Then actually, we're going to play the game. You lot are going to referee it, and there's going to be a bonus five points for whichever team is the most demonstrate sportsmanship. Yeah. And trust me, they'll start like yeah, yeah, yeah. to each other for five imaginary points. But then it uh, creating that allows you to go and stand in different places. And and that would always be my kind of nudge to people. Go and stand in different places and yeah. see some different stuff and maybe set yourself, you know, maybe well this is my coaching challenge to the coaches. Like start off smallish. So you might go, look, I'm gonna going to go and have a real positive interaction with you know four or five players that's going to be really really good stuff not not like rusty just going nice 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 but <laughs> the rubbish that i do um and, and then let and then start to build that week on week and, and and as i'm assuming you know especially if you're working in school you'll know lots of the players really well anyway so you'll have a good insight into kind of what they react well to and so yeah. Um, and just play around with that, and 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 when it goes well, ask them. Well, was that really was that helpful for you? And you know, even just for your own kind of affirmation and confidence, because yeah. it is, it's uh, it's tough coaching. Yeah, of course, yeah, and I suppose it's also utilising the players who aren't able to participate either through injury or, or what have you to to get them to play a role on the sideline, get them to notice things as well, and and what have you. May definitely make use of those people. Give them some clickers, get them to count some stuff. Yeah. Um, so what we've tried to do on these series as well is look at how do you prime the kids to the next session? How do you make the players enthused about what's coming next for the next session? So they're arriving already excited about what's going to take place. Um, we think about the progressions there. We can see on, on, on the session plan. Um, just to start to think about overloading the attack team so they can start to play with the space and recognise that space. Mm -hmm. What are some other things that you would kind of do towards the end of the sessions that would help players enthuse and excite about what's coming next? Um, yeah, I probably spent most of my coaching career going, great session, see you next week. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. I've sort of ended it pretty quickly. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. I mean, look, go away, watch some videos, watch your game, go on YouTube. We're going yeah. to play a scenario. They might go and find South Africa, Japan, and you might replay it at the start of the session. Um, uh, talk about it in computer language. So today was level three on the on the Ready for Rugby game. What would level four look like next week? And, you know, what scoring system might we have? Um, maybe, yeah, just go. Maybe once again, look, you've demonstrated great sportsmanship. I want you to go into school this week and do the same and we'll catch up next week on who demonstrated the best within the school who yep. brought school values to life the best in the week um that's the type of stuff that would definitely excite me great stuff i think we'll, we'll draw that to a conclusion there rusty many thanks for your time i appreciate um the kind of points you've added in there there's some great ideas and tips for for anyone really if you either you know, been coaching the game a long time or your teacher who's kind of picking up rugby for the first time this year, I think there's some kind of uh, tips you can apply and, and put into practice straight away there. So, Rusty, thanks very much for your time, mate. Um, look forward to catching up with you again soon. My pleasure. Thanks, mate.